Hey everybody, it's Kelly with Inky Hamstorn Hearts. How are you guys today? I am so happy to be here with you. I am bringing you another video with the stamp set in the moment. I call this my JoJo stamp set because my daughter, <laughs> um, it reminds me so much of her. I just love this stamp set because, you know, sometimes we don't take care of ourselves, right? So this is a perfect stamp set for you to have to just send to a friend and just say you know relax take some time for yourself you're so good to everybody else be good to yourself too and it shows book reading a book and sitting out watching a sunset having a beverage um having some coffee in the morning and just looking out the window it's just a beautiful stamp set yesterday i used this image and today we're going to use the girl in the bed here with her dog and we are pairing it with scalloped contour dies. We're going to be using this second one down here, and we're cutting that out of basic white cardstock. And we're also going to be using in the background here the beautiful shapes dies. And I have used the hexagon, and I have cut a bunch of different hexagons, the second one down again, um, out of the designer series paper that's a host paper pack. So I am going to show you how to make this really cute patchwork background that looks like a quilt on a bed, which I thought went perfect with this image. So let's go ahead and get started, and I will show you how to go about making this card. So we're going to start with our girl first. Let's get her down and get her stamped onto this piece of um, basic white that I have cut with the scalloped contour dies. I love those dies. It's part of a bundle and I do have the flower stamp set that goes with it because when you purchase our bundles, you get um, a 10% discount and it was part of a bundle. So I purchased it together and there's some flowers that go with it. Now you see what I'm doing here? I'm really putting a lot of pressure so the paper's not shifting, it's moving with the stamp. And I do that to get a good impression. So now she's down onto our scallop contour dies. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the stamp. We're also gonna stamp the words, sometimes the most productive thing you can do is relax. And isn't that true? So many times we take care of everybody else and we don't take care of ourselves. And sometimes you just have to take a little time for you, right? So let's go ahead and ink that up. I'm gonna bring it down here and this is gonna go in this corner right here. So there are our words. Let me clean those. All right, sorry, I'm reaching across. So I'm gonna show you how to color in our image and then we'll work on our little patchwork quilt, okay? So this little girl here, she uses quite a bit of Stampin' Blends. Now when I do figure out what colors I wanna use, I use a little scrap piece of paper and I color in the Stampin' Blends to make sure that those are the colors that I want. And so these are some of the colors that I've used. So I just wanna show you that that's a good way to really see the real color values. So I'm gonna start with her hair. And this one I did all in the deep, which is number 500, I believe, no, 200. So it's in the deep pack, number 100 and 200 come in, this of the natural tones. And I, this time I'm gonna use the medium, which is 500, 600 first, and I'm gonna highlight her hair. I think it came out just a little too dark and my daughter's hair is not quite as dark as mine. So she has a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna go with the lighter color first, and then I'm gonna use the dark to give her some little highlights. And that way she gets a little bit of two-tone in her hair, which I like a lot better. So going with that. Now her book is using Balmy Blue. I'm gonna use the light and the dark. I'm gonna use the dark for the cover of the book. And I, you can see I'm using the bullet tip here. I'm just outlining and then filling in. When you color with these blends, it's so fast. I didn't used to like line art um, stamps as much because they took so long to color. But since we have had these Stampin' Blends, I love these line art stamps that you can color with. So now I'm gonna use the light blue and I'm gonna use it for the pages. So that will fade and get a lot lighter. So there's our book. And I'm just gonna use, there's like a little shadow here on the book from her knee, so I'm just gonna bring my dark back in. And I'm just gonna 
kind of put it at the bottom there of that book. All right, so that, that's it for our blue. So let's work on her pillow, the one in the way back, this darker colored pillow. So that is Blackberry Bliss. And again, I really like how her mug turned out a little bit better than the pillow. So we're gonna upgrade. We're gonna start with the light, Blackberry Bliss. I'm also gonna do the handle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here with the pillow. Gonna fill in that pillow there. First with the light. And then I'm gonna come back in with my dark. And on the mug, I'm just gonna go over the artist's lines here. I'm gonna put a little shadow at the bottom and I'm gonna put a little bit more color there on the stem or the handle of the mug. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the pillow. Okay, I'm just gonna just add a little bit. So it has just a little bit more um, highlight to it. And then I'm gonna fill back in with my light and go back over. There we go. So now it's gonna have just a little bit more of variation in color. So let's work on her other pillow and then we're gonna do her pajama bottoms or her sweatpants or her yoga pants or whatever you wanna call the pants that she's wearing. We're using um, Highland Heather for those. So I'm gonna start with the light Highland Heather just like I did with the other pillow and I'm gonna fill in this one. Okay, now this is the blanket on top of her. And so I'm gonna do her legs now and make sure you don't get the dog's ear. It's a little bit hard when it's in black and white to really see. So you just have to go slow your first time, you know, doing it to make sure that you're getting the right pieces and that you're not coloring, you know, a part of the blanket and it's really supposed to be your legs. So the first one I did, I was really careful with it, but now that I have my guide here, cause I already have one colored in, it's a lot quicker. So there are her pants. I'm going to highlight this bottom section and around here where the dog is leaning, there's probably a shadow and I'm gonna go over the artist marks there. And then for her slipper, I mean, for her socks, I'm gonna go a darker purple with those. So I am gonna give it a coat of this lighter Highland Heather, but then I'm gonna go over it with the dark. And like, this is a part of her leg that's showing there. So I don't want to color that purple. So I'm gonna make sure I avoid that. And then let's come in with the dark. So I really wanna add these highlighted and I want her socks to be darker than her pants. So I'm just adding a little bit of color like that, as you can see, and then I'm gonna go over these marks that I did with the other marker. I'm gonna come up here a little bit and give it a little bit of a highlight, a little definition. All right, so there is her purple. And then on the word relax, I used the light Highland Heather and I just outlined it. I just wanted it to stand out on our card. So I'm just going over and a little bit outside the lines here, just to have that really stand out and show. All right, let's do her face. I'm gonna use this 900, which is part of the light pack. My daughter's fairly um, fair. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do her hand here on the doggy. And I'm gonna do that little piece of her leg here that's showing the way she's sitting. Now we have two more things to do. We have to do her dog and her blanket. So her blanket is using pool party. So I'm gonna start with the dark pool party and I'm gonna just color all the blanket. I'm gonna try and miss the dog. I don't use the brush tip very often, but I really wanna color quickly and I wanna color a big surface. 
so I am using it for the blanket there. And then I wanna avoid the dog's legs here. So this middle small section, it took me some time to figure this out. So take your time. Let me use the bullet tip. I'm gonna do that piece there. And then right here next to her pants is also some of the blanket showing through. That's the dog's leg, that's the dog's leg, and that's a dog's leg. So now when we do our blanket part, we definitely wanna be careful. On this side, we're safe. But on this side, we have to be a little bit careful. So we're gonna come down here. We're gonna avoid the dog. I'm gonna use the switch to my bullet tip. I'm gonna avoid the dog here. And then this is part of the dog, but this is the blanket right here. So this, all this section here can go in I'm gonna try and make her blanket a little darker. I'm gonna do all these little creases and folds in here. I'm gonna go over the top of those. I'm gonna make her blanket just a little darker than her comforter. And I'm gonna bring this down kind of to meet that section. I'm also going to use this along her comforter on her bed and really just highlight that. So now we just have our dog left. Now, my son has a Border Collie. My daughter loves animals, absolutely loves them. And so she loves his Border Collie. My daughter has a bunny, so I think that's really funny. And he hangs out with me quite often. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and make this puppy look like the Border Collie, if I can do a good enough job here. The ears are black, a little bit showing right there in that ear. And then the face, the muzzle is, um, is mostly white there. And then I'm gonna color in, this is the light basic black. I'm gonna color all of this and then our border collie on the legs has white near the bottom. So I'm just gonna color a little bit of black and then I'm gonna leave some white there. I'm trying to make it look like my son's dog. But you can color your dog any color you want, whatever color Stampin' Blends you feel are good, you can use. But there is our border collie, so now we're almost done. I'm just going to do this little tendril that she has hanging down onto the sheet. I wanted to wait until I had colored that so that it would really show. And I think she turned out pretty good. What do you guys think? So let's get these markers out of the way and let me show you how to do your patchwork quilt now. So we have a piece of eight and a half by five and a half um, basic white. Have a little bit. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and fold that, put our two points together here, and use our bone folder along that score line. It was scored at four and a quarter, and our card is going to go this way. Now remember, this piece is going to cover over the top, so not everything needs to be covered with these hexagon pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep placing this over the top and check. So I have some pieces left over from the other card that I made. You see I have some half pieces, some smaller pieces. So I'm just bringing them in. I'm just going to lay them around. I'm going to try and put the same ones near each other as best I can so that it will help me. I have quite a bit of that. So I guess we'll start with this one since I have it pretty well on here. So let's go ahead and place this piece right here on the edge. And you can see that it's gonna be covered right there by this. So we don't need to stick it all the way on because you're just wasting that piece. So we're gonna just put it right here. So let me lift this up and I'm gonna put my adhesive on half. of my hexagon. Let's stick 
this up. And we're gonna put that corner and that corner right there. And just press that into place and let's make sure. Yes, it will cover it. All right, so now we need another piece that's gonna line up there. Now we don't need a full piece. So let's just use this piece right here cause it's a half also and it will take up that spot. So let's go ahead and put adhesive on it. And basically you're just butting the edges of these die cut pieces. You're just butting them against one against the other and you're forming this little patchwork quilt by doing that. So this edge runs right along that edge and just make sure that it's up to the top. And again, this piece is gonna cover, so we don't need the full piece. Let's go ahead and cut this one off in case we need it later. Although I do have a lot of this color. I must not have used that much for the last card, but we'll put it right here. All right, so that's where we're at so far. So let's see if we can stick no, I don't want to use that one because I want to use a full piece in there. Let's see, where was this one going to go? Maybe here. Nope, not yet. All right, we're going to work our way down this piece first. So let's go ahead and take maybe this piece next and place it here. Or maybe I want, maybe I'll do this one right here. I think this will be pretty. So we're going to do again half from point to point. We're gonna put our adhesive and then we'll put that up against the other piece and just get that to sit for a minute before we cut it so now we have this is what we have so far so let's work our way down this side next, okay? Let's go ahead and take one of these purple ones and we're gonna kind of fit this in here somehow, some way. And I think, I think that I want, I wanna make sure that it all fits on here. We're gonna have a piece left over, but we can um, stick something in there to, you know, to wedge it in, to fit it when the time comes, like that. Okay, let's actually go ahead and, um, and do that. Let's take this one here, and then we'll put the purple one down this side. So let's go ahead and just fill this piece in here I meant to do purple, sorry. And let's go ahead and fill the rest of where that piece is gonna fit. So we're gonna go ahead and attach this one right in that corner and make sure that, that end butts up against there and it doesn't shift on you. That's why I don't cut right away. I wait for it to set before I cut, but we can cut this one because that one has been sitting there for a minute. So there's that one. Let's put it back here. And then we'll let this one set. And so when we place this down, you, we're, you see we're gonna need a piece in here. So we have one, two, three, four colors. So we need to put something in here, maybe this one, that's going to fit in this piece here, like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this one. And you can see that sometimes you do use the whole piece and sometimes you just use a portion, but by using them sparingly and letting them fit into place like this. See, there we go. Now we're gonna need another one here. Let's go with a stripe. So I'm gonna put this stripe, and since our stripes are going up and down, I wanna keep them up and down. So I'm gonna place this one here. I'm gonna cut this one first before I glue this. Put 
All right. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put the glue onto my card and it's basically a triangle. It's going to come up. This is the point and then it's going to come down. So I just want to make sure that I have enough glue on there. And then again, remember my stripes are going up and down. So I want to keep them up and down. And I'm just going to press that into place. So we're doing quite well. We're halfway done almost. We need another piece in here. So we're going to use um, a piece of maybe this purple. We'll do a half piece. Let's see if this one will fit in here. Let's see if I place this small piece. Now I want, I definitely want it to be a a full piece because I'll just trim that bottom section off. You see, that's what's gonna show. So I want it to come down all the way down to the bottom. So let's just go ahead and put adhesive except on this bottom section. And let's put this piece into place. So this one's gonna come right here and we're gonna leave a little corner that's gonna need a little piece right there when we're done. Let's make sure that that is covered. Yep, that looks good. So far, we're doing good, right? So I just have a small piece here. We'll fill that in later. So we need another piece of this one. So let's go ahead and we're gonna put it right next to this one. And I think on this side, I need one of these. So let's see if I can fit one of these on here. Let's see. If I use this one, I don't know if it'll cover all the way. Let's see. No, I need a full piece. I might have to cut myself another one of those because I don't want to put a stripe there. So I might need another full one of that. Let's go ahead and trim these off so we have them to use on other ones. There's that one. Oh, this one I, I kind of glued wrong, didn't I? It's okay, I covered the wrong section. All right, so I'm just gonna keep that one upside down. So let's go ahead and place this down. And I need a full piece of this, this pattern, so I'll grab um, a scrap of that and go ahead and run that through. We can use a small piece though, right here in this corner. And then we can also put, let's see if this half piece will fit. I'm gonna use, I don't know if I want a full one. Do I want a full one? I think I'm gonna use a half piece and then I'm gonna put a half piece next to it. So that will fill that gap there. So this one's gonna come from this side here. And we're gonna put something else up here maybe. Maybe one of these. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that one. I have to make sure that my stripe is going the right direction. So let's go ahead and patch this piece and then we'll cut at the end when we need it. So we're gonna go ahead and put just a little bit on this section. We're not gonna use all of it. We're gonna meet that end right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and use this whole piece here that's left over. And our stripe is going up and down. There we go. So you can see it's just trial and error, trying to figure out, place your piece over the top and see what you need and where you need it. Okay. Ooh, I probably should have put a full one here. Let's just leave that alone. And then on this side, we'll go ahead and add this piece. right there, and let's see how that will look. 
yeah, I'm just gonna cut that straight here where it meets this one. Okay. Like this is just a quilt that you've made from the extra pieces that you have lying around your house, right? So this is just trial and error, placing your pieces down. Of course you can cut full, full hexagons and attach those if you wish. Um, I just didn't want to. And I had fun actually making it into kind of a puzzle. So this piece here, we're gonna need maybe a purple one. Let's see if this one will fit. Yeah, right there, we can use that one. In that gap there. And let's see what else I have left. I have a lot of this one, so I'm definitely gonna need to cut some more. But I wanna put another stripe. Maybe I will put that stripe right here. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna cut a half. Cut this in half. I will only need half of it to show. So let's put that one in place. And then we'll trim off the ends and see where we're still at. And then I'll go ahead and cut everything at the same time. So let's put this one. I think it was the other way around this way. Was it, how did I do that? Oh Lord, now I've confused myself. How did I decide that that was gonna come on there? I had a full one, let's try the full one and see how I did it. The point? Yeah, that point meets that point. Okay, now that I've thoroughly confused you and me, it was this way. Sorry guys. Maybe this isn't my really my best video, huh? <laughs> It's okay, I'm human. We're all human, we all make mistakes. I'm doing the best I can. But basically what you're doing is you're building a patchwork. I'm gonna pick up this excess here. There we go. All right, so I need to just fill in the little gaps that I have left. So I think I'm going to um, grab some purple and I'm gonna cut a hexagon for this corner. And then I'm gonna grab this color. Let's see if I can fit this one in here to fit. Yeah, I think this one will work. I can just work with this piece since I have so much left over of this. Make sure I pull that off and not rip my cardstock. Get that glue off of there. All right. So in this corner, I will use this piece. What did I do with it now? Oh Lord, guys, forgive my messy, messiness of um, my project here, my project messiness. I think I'm gonna put that one in the corner. All right, so let's just put some glue there and we're gonna put that purple one there. I'm not gonna have to cut very much. But basically what you're doing is you're just creating yourself a little patchwork of prints that are gonna fill the outer edges of your card. And let's put our piece in place. Hey, we're doing good so far. Just have this one little section and a tiny bit here. What color do you think we should put here? Purple, right? I think purple. Because we have the stripes here. We have the green. Either green or purple, I'm thinking. So I need, like I have too much of this color, right? I went a little overboard with that. Let's see if we can get this green one to work. If we place it here, let's see. That's not too bad. I don't think it's gonna look bad there. Although, I'm gonna go just go ahead and cut another green one. So just give me a second, I will be right back. Cause I really think that that will be the difference that we need. So let me grab my scrap paper here and I will cut us another one. I thought I had enough, but 
I was just off slightly by um, those colors. So we'll need a purple one and we'll need a um, one of the green material. Let me find that one. All right. So I have my scrap to do that color. And I just need my scrap to do the... All right, I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to cut that real quick. Please hold. <laughs> I just need to get my cutter so that I can cut a piece of the designer series paper big enough that it will fit. bring in my mini machine and we're going to cut those. I love this mini machine because number one, it fits in the camera so great. And number two, it's so portable. All right, so we have our hexagon. We're going to do one in this color. So I've cut my strip. Let's put our plate over the top and we'll get that going. All right, and let's cut one out of this color. Go ahead and put that in there. I love this little mini machine. I don't know if you guys have a little stamp and cut and emboss machine. I call it the little boss because it's called such a big name, right? We don't need um, to have to say stamp and cut and emboss mini stamp and cut and emboss machine and then stamp and cut and emboss machine, right? So it's nice to have the difference. So I just call them the little boss and the big boss or the mini boss and the boss and I think that that and tends to work out just fine. Okay, so now with these last couple pieces, I think we're gonna be good to go. So right here, I'm gonna put, I think I'm gonna do the green on this side and I'm gonna do a half piece. Or should I do the purple? I think purple, guys. You think purple? I think purple. Let's put the purple in there. So I'm just gonna put some adhesive on this piece here like that. And it's just gonna be a corner that it fits. And then we're going to do the this corner here. I'm gonna use a little piece of this green. Let's just put this one right here. All right, and I think that's it. So once these are dry, let's move all of these shapes out of the way and clean up my mess that I have made. Whenever I do my die cutting, I like to um, just trim off with my paper snips on my DSP all the extra pieces and so then they're ready for the next time, right? So I'm gonna leave those. These are good, this one's good. I can use that another time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and everything else here, I'm gonna take it off camera and discard it. And then we will be almost finished. We're just gonna attach our girl onto our card while that is drying before I cut those last two pieces off there. I am going to um, put the dimensionals on the back. And so I like to put quite a bit of dimensionals because I don't like it to bow or to be able to dip down in any spots. So on my long ends, I like to do three. And then I always put two in the middle or whatever, sometimes three in the middle if you need three. But that is what we're gonna need. I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool and we're gonna pull the backs off of these guys and it'll be ready to be put on here. 
I love using the take your pick tool because it helps remove these pieces so easily and they end up right in my trash can because I'm one that can't stand for that stuff to be stuck to everything else. So let's go ahead and trim these pieces off. So we're gonna trim this. You can see the back of my um, card is not really um, the cleanest, but we're gonna clean it up. I use an adhesive um, remover that I have. We used to sell these many, 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 many years ago and they last forever. It used to be a square, that's how much I use it. But it's really awesome because it just removes all the residue if you're using adhesive like this, this wet adhesive, and it leaves these little like pieces onto your card and you can just lift them up with this adhesive remover and really clean up, especially white cards. Uh, they're hard to keep clean, right? There we go. All right, now it's clean on the back. The front looks like a hot mess, but no one's gonna know because we're gonna cover it up with our cool little girl here. Didn't she turn out awesome? I'm so happy with her. Let's put her a little higher. Yeah, right there. All right. And then as a last finishing touch, I'm gonna use my Iridescent Rhinestone Basic Jewels. And sorry for all the craziness on this video, but it's real life, right? Like when you're crafting, things like this go on. I'm gonna use the large because I really want them to pop and show. So there was three sizes and I still have a few large left. Here's the medium and then this little section here is the small. But as you can see, I really love these iridescent rhinestones. I have used the package well. Let's put one down here, maybe right in between both of those colors. But what I love about the iridescent rhinestones is they take on the color that they're behind. So you can see on this one how I put it behind two colors, it looks two colors. And then this one on the white looks really iridescent. So I do love that about it. I'm gonna use Looks like I got a little bit of adhesive on my card here. I love these adhesive removers and I'm sure you can find them. Um, that's what they're called is an adhesive remover. And they're these little rubbery eraser pieces that work really awesome with wet glue when you get residue. So what do you guys think of this awesome card? I love the patchwork behind her because to me it just just makes you feel like a nice warm hug, right? Nothing's better than like a little quilt to cuddle underneath and make the day better. And when we have self-care, sometimes we need to just hang out, right, in our bed and read a good book or listen to a podcast or just relax and binge watch something on Netflix or Hulu I hope that you guys have enjoyed this card. Um, as you can see, I am just like everybody else when it comes to making things. Sometimes they may go smooth and sometimes they don't, but I don't edit on my channel so that you guys can see what to do when mistakes are made. And as you can tell today, I was a hot mess, but I hope that you enjoyed anyway. Um, all the products for this card are linked in the description below. Um, just definitely check it out. The paper that I use is called Design a Daydream and it is a host paper pack. So if you choose to have a book party, let me know if you'd like to have one of those or if you want to purchase for yourself, any order of 150 or more is considered a party and you can earn Stampin' Rewards. So with those Stampin' Rewards, you can get this paper for free. So thanks for joining me. Definitely subscribe if you want more real content because obviously I'm very real making mistakes left and right with you guys, but teaching you how to fix them as well. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate you here. Um, definitely share my video. I would greatly appreciate that as I'm trying to grow my channel. And thanks for joining me. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping.